This I do want to read. Trump wins Colorado ballot disqualification case at the U.S. Supreme Court. If you did not know, three states opted to remove Trump from their state ballots as voting is managed by state electoral commissions. So it's not that the ballots of the U.S. Um, are are handled federally. The states manage elections. Um, this is kind of like a holdback, a uh, holdback, a uh, holdover from the delegate system, which doesn't. I mean, doesn't really make sense. Like to have actual delegates casting votes doesn't make sense. In, like the modern era, but um. Oh, okay. Uh, I have to fix the many dot live domain. What was I gonna say? So states manage the elections themselves, and hey, dude, I'll fix it. States manage the elections themselves, and as a result, they manage the ballots, they print the ballots, and they decide who gets to vote um, as they're responsible themselves for managing citizenship. And Colorado decided that they would apply the Constitutional 14th Amendment, which was a Reconstruction-era amendment. It was after the 13th Amendment um, did various things, including abolish slavery, and the 14th Amendment barred any Confederates from running for public office, even in the South. Um, but the way that they did this was by... Um, blanket banning anyone guilty of insurrection or aiding enemies of the state from holding public office, which presumably would include the presidency. So uh, Colorado, Maine, and I think Illinois were the ones to say, you know what, we're going to apply this constitutional ban. We're going to say that Trump can't run in our districts, and we're not going to print his name on the ballots, which is only kind of ceremonial in a sense because there is one um maine is one of the few states in the u.s that actually gives uh, proportionate delegates so uh trump would get one delegate from maine's two delegates because the southern district is the one that um, goes democrat the northern one is the one that goes republican uh, so he would lose one delegate however illinois and colorado do not have proportional delegate representation uh, for voting. And as a result, um, he would lose none because he's sure to lose both Illinois and uh, Colorado. Uh, the real interesting thing about this is that the people who have been screaming about democracy for years are the ones who advocated for literally removing a candidate from the ballot in a state which he had no chance of winning at all, um, which is a blunder. It's like a serious blunder because if it, the only thing that that would actually practically serve to do is to galvanize voters to go out in the states that still have them on the ballot and vote for them. Like it's a serious thing. It's an anti-democratic maneuver and it, it is galvanizing to your enemies. So it was, it was a very much a virtue signal. In the original literal definition of what a virtue signal is, it was a symbi symbi symbiotic, symbolic move to uh, just aggrandize how you know progressive these states are at the expense of their own their own party and their own candidate. Um, and then it went to the Supreme Court because, of course, it would because this is retarded, and to the surprise of absolutely no one saying um, it came back in favor of Trump because obviously it would um, for a constitutional republic with democratic elections and it doesn't make sense to remove the president, the former president of the United States from the ballot. Just doesn't make sense. Um, even with the most generous interpretation of the 14th Amendment uh, and the disqualifying clause, it just does not make sense. And um, perhaps the only I wouldn't actually no, not even I don't remember what I said about this originally when it was first going to the Supreme Court. And was first happening but um it was a 9-0 verdict which is unusual because usually the the court has some dissent in this case it did not all nine justices even the the gay ones even the black lady said this is fucking stupid because it is obviously and i don't know how anyone could be surprised by that like you know from a legal perspective it doesn't make sense from a constitutional perspective it doesn't make sense from a philosophical standpoint it makes no sense um, the only, the only logic, and this is something I've learned about, um, studying like history in the world war II history, there is a, a concept in Germany that's called like the self 
defending democracy. They have like a fancy word for it. It's like the Streitsbach, Demokratie or some shit. But it basically means that Germans, Germany's constitution is explicitly democratic and it prohibits Germans from voting anti-democratic. So there's like multiple built-in democratic saving mechanisms. You have the very fun um, constitutional court called the Verfassungsschutzgericht. And that is that bans that bans all the Nazi parties basically, and they're thinking about banning the AFD. So Germany has the has like the most like pro democratic anti anti democratic democracy in the world, and that's probably what Colorado was thinking. Like we're going to be we're going to be a self defending democracy like Germany, and we're going to ban politicians that we don't like because he's Putler or he's a. Trumpler or whatever the fuck, and we can't allow him to, to jeopardize our democracy. Only by jeopardizing the democracy ourselves can we protect democracy from itself. Because uh, the question of if people should be able to vote democracy away is a philosophical one. Um, but it's not an American constitutional one. So, what was I saying? Trump is on the ballots. People are crying. And some people are crying piss. See. Keith Olbermann. Keith Olbermann is crying piss. He says, the Supreme Court has betrayed democracy. Its members, including Jackson, Kagan, and Sotomayor, have proved themselves inept at reading comprehension, and collectively, the court has found itself to be corrupt and illegitimate. It must be dissolved. Gunther Eagleman replies and says, cry more, nine to zero. Keith Olbermann replies and says, Those aren't tears, fascist. They're urine, and I'm sure you enjoy being bathed in it. Um, so there's a community note that was approved for this message uh, on Twitter. And now I believe the community note for this says, Keith Olbermann is saying that he cries piss. This is not biologically possible. And then it cites the Wikipedia article on tears which notes that there is no urine in tears. Um, so, yeah, I think, what, I mean, what he is I, I understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to say, I'm, I'm pissing on you. You think that you're being rained in my tears, but it's actually my PP. I PP on you, epic ownage. Um, Keith Olbermann has completely lost his fucking mind, and if you're not American, you don't know who he is. Um, Keith Olbermann was originally a sports commentator. He's a big fan of baseball. And at some point, he uh, he's a pundit. He was a pundit for MSNBC, which was one of the, um, I think the, th the either the second or the third most popular news network in the in United States cable television for like a very long time. I want to say that C CNN is more famous now, but CNN was like the odd child because they sucked. Uh, MS I, I want to say MSNBC trumped CNN for a very long time. And uh, so Keith Olbermann was segued from a baseball commentator to being a political pundit. And he kind of became um, famous or popular. I want to say he was the most popular um, commentator on MSNBC for a while. Uh, and he was popular during the, uh, the George Bush era. And he was into the Obama era. And he was kind of like anti-war. He was very typical. He was very boring. Um, he just kind of went on these very long-winded monologues about things um, and he concluded every episode of his show uh, countdown with keith olbermann I, I think is what it's called and it would say like it has been 1548 days since george w bush declared mission accomplished in iraq and that was like his way of protesting iraq but at some point he lost his fucking mind i wouldn't say during the trump election he lost his mind he got fired from msnbc he became a, uh, he tried to self-host his show on some uh, YouTube publication nobody's ever heard of, and I forget the name of. And now, I think that ended because it was extraordinarily unpopular. And now he's just like an insane person. He's like a Patrick Tomlinson tier lolcal on Twitter that everyone makes fun of because he talks about crying piss and, and talks down to people in like the most condescending, retarded way possible. Um so yeah, it's it's uh it's really crazy.
It's really crazy, it, like, because he's like a, he's not like a, he's not like a fucking nobody. You know what I mean? He's Keith Olbermann. He used to have a, he used to have like the the, the number one cable television show on um in his time slot. I think the only person that beat him out on the news circuit was uh, uh Bill O'Reilly, and now he's like degraded to <laughs> to <laughs> to this shit on Twitter. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Funny how things change over time. Um, so there's that. That's Keith Olbermann. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!